What's good? What's good? This is your whole swag boy from swagboy360.com. Today's episode Umar Johnson takes shots at Tariq Nashi during the interview. I want y'all to check this out, man. Umar Johnson is still at it. I- I'm late. Umar, boy, yo, you better leave Tariq alone, son. You you know he done got on your ass before. Umar, you know when you and Tariq was beefing three years ago, he aired your ass out, son. You do not want a round two with Tariq Nashi. You do not want a rematch. Yo, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Tariq Nashi, yo, yo, Tariq Nashi did to Umar Johnson... What the locks did to Dipset on a versus battle. <laughs> That's what he did. That's what he did to Umar Johnson, yo. So, so Umar, uh, uh, unless you want another ass whooping, you better leave Tariq alone. But I, I, I'm going to play y'all. I'm going to play y'all the bullshit he was saying about Tariq Nashi. Here we go. Everybody you know Tariq Nasheed of the foundational black American uh, put out, he, he was involved in this video where he mistake he, 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 he thought someone that he was talking to was African so to speak as if he's not African himself but uh, like someone that is continental African because of the guy's features somehow um, uh, he, he the guy is obviously is African American but uh, he, he, he looked more continental African, so to speak. And there was this brown paper test that he was applying to this guy to say, you're not one of my people. What part of the Congo did your family come from, nigga? I don't know. <laughs> Tariq Nashi is asking him, what part of the Congo did your family come from? So basically, this dude right here is saying he's uh, African-American. Tariq Nashi like, no, nigga, you ain't African. You ain't no black American, nigga. You straight from Africa. Now, for those who don't know, Tariq Nashi, he love roasting niggas. Like, like, cast me coming on this Instagram live talking shit. Tariq be roasting niggas, man. This shit be funny as hell. I don't care. This shit funny. I'm going to let y'all see this shit. Watch this shit, y'all. No. Okay, no, no, let's play a game. Your family, your mom and dad and your granddad in people like him, entertainers, yes. not scholars, entertainers who just pop up out of the blue and present themselves as if they are experts or scholars on African history, culture, and politics is very dangerous because since he's such a good entertainer, he attracts the young people, you understand? And because our young people don't have a political education, they're easily enticed, brainwashed, and swept up into the rhetoric that someone like a Mr. Nashi puts forward, he's very dangerous because he's an opportunist. Once again, Nick. Wait, nigga, you ain't no opportunist? Nigga, you ain't dangerous? Niggas ain't gave you more than a half million dollars. You ain't no damn opportunist? How you, how the hell you got some nerve talk about to what, how Tariq Nashi is dangerous? Tell me what dangerous shit Tariq Nashi did, nigga. Tell me what dangerous shit did Tariq Nashi did. I can tell you some dangerous shit your ass did. I seen single mothers give you their hard-earned money expecting their 10-year-old son to be one of your first students and that never came to light. That never that never happened. That's dangerous, nigga. Because that lady that you met that gave you a donation with her phone number, with her work phone number, her home phone number, and her address and said, my son will be your first student. That ain't dangerous. 
Negro and Coon. Okay, you made videos which talked about African history. You made videos which talked about the African contribution That's true. to humanity. The Hidden Color series was largely an African documentary series. But because you see that there's this new wave of anti-Africanism in America, you're going to disconnect yourself from Africa, where you've been, where you've spoken, and now you want to reinforce this, we're not from Africa we're different from the Africans. We have to separate ourselves from the Africans. Well, where was that when you were making the documentaries? So what you're dealing with is a pure opportunist, a chameleon, someone who will change with the time and who will change with the season. And what determines whether he changes now or later? The money to be made. Wherever there's some money to be made, you will find Tariq Nasheed there. Uh, that, that's just unfortunate because I thought... Uh, I thought he was uh, doing a good job in terms of because we respect everyone that is involved in the in the in the struggle in one in form, form or the other, uh, but that was just uh, unfortunate what he did. Wow! Wow! <sighs> What's that term they say, man? If it ain't the kettle calling the, if it ain't the pot calling the kettle black, what? What's that terminology? Somebody in the chat tell me, yo. What's that terminology? They said if it ain't the pot calling the kettle black, if it ain't the... Some shit like that. Y'all get what I'm saying. This nigga got some nerve calling Tariq Nasheed an opportunist. Like he is not. If you need to pat calling the kettle black because you need... Oh, uh, I don't know. But, yo... How dare Umar Johnson say that about Tariq when he's an opportunist himself? See, I tell you why Umar is mad, yo. If it ain't the pot calling the kettle black, there we go. If it ain't the pot calling the kettle black, you got some nerve. You calling Tariq Nashi the opportunist, well, then what the hell are you, Umar? What the hell are you, Umar? You telling, you telling Lord Jamar, hey man, the school going to open up in, in the beginning of 2021. In the beginning of 2021, in January, you said the school was going to open. Is the school open? Can 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 parents enroll their kids? Can these single mothers that you target, can they enroll their badass kids in your school now, nigga? It's 20, are we in the middle of 2021, nigga? But you know the bullshit you doing? You are opportunist because now you using part of the school as a way for you to get more donations. Nigga, you throwing a block party. You throwing a damn block party. Niggas is trying to put, black parents are trying to put their kids to into your school and you throwing a goddamn block party like everybody's supposed to be excited. It's just another way for you to get some more money out of them. That's dangerous. But you calling him dangerous? You jealous because he's raised more money than you for his hidden for his, for his hidden colors museum or hidden history museum. That's why you mad, Umar. Tell him why you really mad, son. I know you watching Tariq raise his money for this museum, yo. I know you watching him. This is why you mad, son. Because the same people. You begging, you begging, hey, hey, I, I, I need your donations, I, I, I need your free labor, hit, hit up them cash apps, hit up them cash apps. The same people you say hit up them cash apps, they, they willingly giving their money to Tariq to open up this Hidden History Museum. Something that the black community needs. I don't know why you still going at Tariq, nigga. See, when, when that person, when that person, when that individual asks you, about Tariq Nashi, look, look, you should just brush it off, yo. You should just brush it up, change the subject, and talk about your make-believe school that you're trying to open up. Your make-believe school that you're trying to open up that will never get open. Because you don't know how to run no damn school, nigga. Even, hypothetically speaking, let's say a miracle happened and Umar Johnson got all the money he needed to open up the school. He still don't even know how to run the motherfucker. I heard, I heard a video of this nigga saying how he spent 20, 
to twenty five thousand dollars. He said he he said two different prices on the same shit. One minute he said he spent twenty thousand on a blueprint, and then one minute he said he spent twenty five thousand on the blueprint. Right? This nigga admitted to spending that much money on the blueprint, and he ain't have to. You just admitted to wasting people's money. Why the hell should they give you a dollar more? Why? And you just admitted, you said, I didn't even have to spend that money. That lets me know you don't know how to budget. That, 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 that lets me know you don't know how to handle money. You doing all this bullshit by yourself and you don't know what you doing. You're effing up the money. You fucked it up. Just admit it. We ain't got no time to be talking about Tariq Nashi and his anti-African tactics. What does his anti what does his anti-African tactics gotta do with you not open up the, that, that open up that goddamn school? How is that relatable to you? How? It's not. You using Tariq Nashi to deflect. From what people need to really be paying attention. And that's you not knowing how to handle people's money. You don't fuck about no goddamn block party. That idea you had about this school was a beautiful idea. You talking about how the kids going to learn how to be a, uh, grow their own vegetables on a damn farm. You talking about how the kids going to learn how to, uh, 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 what you say? How they going to learn how to, uh, uh. Be in the stock market. You talking about how kids going to learn how to do IT work. All this shit you talked about. Shit got me excited, man. You motivated me to have some kids, nigga. After listening to you, when you came in that bookstore, they talked about how you going to open up a school for boys. And all the curriculum you was teaching, nigga, you had me thinking about Shooting this bitch club up. You had me thinking about getting the bitch I was dating at the time. You had me thinking about getting this bitch pregnant so I can send my kids to your school, nigga. <laughs> Come to find out it was all a bunch of bullshit. And another reason why I think Tariq Nashi is on his pro- black american tip and little anti-african because africans don't fuck with us like that because he to read he was down with ados but like now now he he made another term foundational black americans because we built this country but yet and still the africans they distance themselves from niggas you do know that right umar that's what Tariq is talking about Tariq ain't, Tariq ain't talking about, oh, let's, let, 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 let's smash on the Africans all that. No, no, he ain't talking about that. He basically letting you know that Africans don't fuck with us. Africans distance themselves from black Americans. You don't talk about this shit. See, when, when you on your little pan-Africanism shit, you, you don't, you don't, you don't touch on how a lot of Africans, not the majority, because you got some cool African brothers and sisters out there. But a lot of the Africans out there, they look down on black Americans. You don't talk about this because you preach this pan-African bullshit. You don't talk about how the Africans, how they call us katas behind our back. You don't talk about that. You don't, you don't talk about how Africans really think about black Americans. You don't, you, you don't talk about what the Africans tell their kids before they go to America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They tell them kids, look, you're going to see black people that look like you, but they're not one of us. These are slaves. These are slaves. That's, a, that's what Tariq be talking about, man. When Africans come over here, they don't try to share their knowledge with us. But they benefit off the hard work of our ancestors, though. That's what Tariq be talking about. But see, Umar, you don't acknowledge that shit. You, 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 you want to you wanna act like it's kumbaya with all the Africans and shit. 
That's what you want to act like. You want to act like, uh, is everything kumbaya? Kumbaya. Check, check this out. Check this out. Around here, it's some African communities out here. I, I, I'm being for real with you. It's some Nigerian, Ghana, 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 I don't know how to say it, but I know communities in, I know communities over here on the East Coast is very African. They got some African communities, right? Let me just say something about the Africans, nigga, because because I know you don't want to talk about this. The African communities, they're very tight knit, right? It's very tight knit, okay? They not letting niggas come in their community. They ain't letting niggas come in their network. That little this little African network they got, they not inviting niggas in. They not um, I'm sorry, they not inviting black Americans into their network. I know a dude. I I I I had a dude right, who was he? We, we we was cool with each other, son. Hey yo, this dude, like I'm a photographer, right? He knew some Africans that's having an event, right? I said, yo, yo, son, let the, let them niggas know I do photography, yo. They like, nah, nah, they only hire Africans. They only hire Africans. What about that, Umar? Why you don't talk about that? You know what? The same thing you don't talk about, the racism that Africans have towards black Americans, the same way you don't acknowledge how these black women are the enemies towards these black kings out here. You don't want to talk about that. You don't want to talk about that. You got to watch Umar. Umar, you the dangerous one. You the dangerous one, yo. Because you out here teaching these women how to be masculine towards their black man. You ain't, te you ain't telling these women how they need to be submissive. You the dangerous one. You the, you the dangerous one. You want the black Americans to just go deal with the Africans as if they look at us as they brother. Oh, yo, you know, I found out a long time ago, all Africans don't look at me as they brother. Yo, I, yo, I was disappointed, nigga. I was disappointed, nigga. Nigga I, nigga, I was on some Wakanda shit before Black Panther came out, nigga. Nigga, 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 nigga. I was so into the African culture, nigga. Nigga. I used to make up my own language that sound African. No bullshit. I I used to make up African chants, nigga. And it, was, it wasn't even African. It, it, it was just shit that sound African, some, some bullshit I made up, nigga. Until I really got around these Africans. And I saw they didn't look at me as they boada. They didn't look at me as they boada. Nigga, no bullshit. I want it. I wanted an African family, nigga. No bullshit. When I was growing up, nigga, when I was in middle school, you know what I said? I said, forget these American women. I'm going to get me an African woman. N -n nigga, nigga, nigga. I was 18 years old looking for my Serafina. Where is my Serafina? I, 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 I had the dashiki on. Yo, I think I, think, I, think I got a picture of a dashiki. I, I, think I was wearing a dashiki and everything. Looking for my Serafina. Where is my African queen? Where is my African queen? And guess what? I was meeting all these African bitches. I was meeting all these African bitches, right? Saying, like saying to myself, I'm going to make one of these African women my queen, man. They was curving me, man. These African bitches was curving me, right? Not only was they curving me, they was telling me how and why they didn't fuck with black American dudes like me. They was telling me why. And on top of that, you know what? The African bitches that did give me a little play, the African women that did give me a number, they wasn't submissive. They, read, they, they, they wasn't ready to cook and clean for me. Like, like... I'm like, yo, yo, I was talking to this one African, like, this one African bitch came over, right? I, I'm thinking this bitch about to bring me some jollof rice, some, 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 uh, some, some jungle meat. You know what I'm saying? Well, no, not jungle, bush meat. They call it bush meat. I'm thinking this bitch about to bring me on some jollof rice and some motherfucking bush meat, right? 
Don't you know this bitch came over, right? First of all, the bitch ain't had no jello right. The bitch ain't had no bush meat. So I'm like, fuck it, fuck it, yo. She's just gonna pamper me her own little way. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, bitch. Uh, so what you gonna do? Uh, you gonna, you, you want me to jump in the bathtub? You want me to run the water? Like, you want me to jump in the bathtub so you can give me like, you know what I mean? Like, 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 give me a, a, a royal bath. Like, what you gonna do? This bitch look at me and say, oh, oh, I'm not doing that. I am not doing that. What you, what, what do you take me for? I'm not doing that. I said, I know Miss Fufu ain't trying to spaz on me. I know Miss Fufu ain't trying to like flex on a nigga. I'm like, bitch, ain't you African? Yeah, yes, I am African, boo. What does that have to do with anything? What, what does that have to do with anything? I'm like, bitch, you African. Bitch, you better act like an African bitch with me. But she wasn't. And that wasn't the only African that did that with me. All these African bitches, they don't act like that when it comes to black American men. They not submissive to the black American men. Do you talk about that, Umar? Huh? Huh? Mr. Pan-Africanism? Mr. Pan-African? Tell me why these African bitches ain't submissive to the black men in America. Tell me why these African bitches ain't submissive to the black American men in America. Why, nigga? Why, nigga? You don't want to talk about that. You want to deflect, cover up, change the goddamn subject and talk about Tariq Nashi. Nigga, you don't need to say a damn, not, not a damn, not a nada about Tariq Nashi. You need to focus on getting this fucking school up. You know what? Why the fuck? Why, why am I talking about this guy? It ain't opening. You ain't going to have no goddamn school. It ain't happening. I can't believe this shit got me pissed off right now, man. I, ooh, ooh, yo. And the, the nerve you had to get, you got, you had the nerve to, to get mad at Lord Jamar when he was asking you some real legitimate questions. You got to learn to get an attitude with Lord Jamar. And he was coming at you on some humble shit. He wasn't even being rude to your ass, nigga. But you want to turn around and kiss the African ass. Bow down to these Africans. And they call you Kata Pika behind your back. What about that, Umar? What about how the African call you Kata Pika? Or when you come around these Africans and you tell them you are African, knowing that they know you ain't no African. Yeah, they smile in your face. They smile in your face. But as soon as you turn your back, they say, you are a bitch ass nigga. <laughs> He's a bitch ass nigga. He is not one of us. He is not Yoruba. You not Yoruba. See, that's what I learned about Africans, man. Africans, they tribal motherfuckers. Like, straight up. Like, like I, I gotta admit, e even the Africans that's over here, they don't fuck with other African Nigga, if you ain't down with they tribe, they ain't fucking with you either, yo. The Yorubas and the... Uh, uh, What's the other shit? What's the other shit, yo? You got the Yorubas. Damn, it, it, it's another it, it, it's another tribe that's big over here. If you ain't down with they tribe, they ain't fucking with you. That's what I'm saying, yo. When, when, when the Africans see me, he don't see me as his brother, man. The only time I'm an African brother is when the cops whoop their ass. When the cops whoop, when the cops whoop an African ass, all of a sudden, like, where is my boy da? Where is my boy that's his sister? Black and my black lives matter. Where's my boy da? Where's my boy does that? Protest with me, my boy da. Now we African. Now I'm your brother. But why we gotta why I gotta wait till a cop whoop your ass for you to see me as your brother, nigga? Why? That's what you need to be talking about, Umar. If, if you want to be this fake-ass African or, or this pan-African, you, you need to better the relation. You, you need to be the middleman when it comes to better, bettering the relationship between black Americans and Africans. That's what you need to do. You need to be the middleman, but you're not. You want to act like it don't exist. You want to act like the, the, the problems between African uh, Africans over here and black Americans don't exist. That's why I want to understand how the hell, if, if you like this right now, how the hell you going to, how the hell you going to run a goddamn school? How? 
square. You can't even function on your own. And you telling me, you expect me to believe that you could be a functioning principal? Nigga, nigga, if, if this school open, you'll be having fundraisers every goddamn weekend. Every weekend, it'll be a new goddamn fundraiser. Every weekend, you say, hey, 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 the electricity bill is, is, is a couple thousand. We need to have a fundraiser. Like, every other weekend is going to be a damn fundraiser, man. Fuck this damn school. It's not opening, man. It's not opening. And you know what? A lot of things, you, matter of fact, matter of fact, you need to have an open, on the live interview. Let let the people ask you all the questions we need to ask you, yo. And don't deflect and change the subject and talk some bullshit, man. And I'm serious. And that was today's episode. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'm going to catch you in the next go round, my nigga. Hello.